Hey everybody, welcome back to Bree's Toys. Uh, uh, this is going to be a substitute to Bree's Toy Talk for the week. Uh, brief update, um, I'm having technical issues with my internet. Our ISP, we have a wireless ISP in the home. Somehow, we ended up using all our data for the month. And they shut us off. Uh, cold turkey, they didn't even throttle us. They did this a week ago. I've been using the uh, hotspot on my cell phone. I have a T-Mobile plan, 100 gigabytes. So I thought that would get me through the week. Uh, but I ran out of hotspot on Wednesday. And I was going to upload, I upload my videos on Thursday. And I have a video that has been uploading for at least 18 hours. And it has an hour to go, allegedly. But it's been saying an hour to go for three hours. So... It, it, it'll get uploaded when it gets uploaded, but unfortunately, I don't have enough network bandwidth to do videos that way. But on the plus side, I have unlimited 5G on my cell phone proper, not hotspot, but proper. So I can still do videos from the cell phone, which is what I'm going to do for the next few days. Do more like um, topic type videos while I wait for my fiber optic to get hooked up on Thursday, uh, sometime between 8 a.m. and uh, 12 noon, allegedly, uh, my time. So I should, once I get the fiber optic, 300 megabits per second, unlimited data, going forward, I shouldn't have bandwidth issues ever again, uh, presumably. Um, now, I also have three laptops so if one laptop ever craps out, I have I have spares uh, for whatever reason. I have a gaming laptop, I have my uh, video production laptop, and then my general all-purpose office laptop. But any one of them can do videos. Any one of them can upload uh, because I have a USB um, camera that is interchangeable because it's USB. So I, I'm, I'm okay for producing videos. It's just once I have them recorded, I can't fucking get them to the YouTube server because I have no fucking bandwidth. And I'm not going to go sit at fucking Starbucks trying to upload videos because I have no idea what their fucking bandwidth is like. And I don't like going out in the public. So that's enough little uh, rant. Today, it's a pseudo toy topic. And I'm going to do a couple more videos today as well. But this one... I am specifically talking about a um, animated television program that is uh, a tie-in to a toy line, and I'm specifically talking about the 1987 uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, because I have recently picked up all 10 seasons of this show, and I'm watching them episode by episode. I am about a third of the way through season three, and I figured, all right, I've got enough thoughts to dig into this show before I go further, which I'll, you know, do a full recap retrospective after I complete the series. But for right now, there's a few things I want to point out that I've observed. And the first thing is, obviously, this is a toy commercial. That goes without saying, but I said it. Um, and I say obviously because in literally every episode, literally every episode, they introduce a new toy. And if you look at the toy catalog online, um, you go back and look at the toys that were actually sold, they pretty much followed through on that, by and large, for the most part. There's a few quote-unquote toys that are represented in, in in specific episodes that you know never got produced for one reason or another or were just like okay this is the uh, MacGuffin for the episode and you would expect them to make a toy out of it but they didn't for whatever reason <clears throat> now I have to be upfront and honest with you I have very little information on the comic book I've never read a single issue of the comic book Back when Ninja Turtles were at the height of their popularity, sometime around 1990 or 91, one of my classmates, I'm not going to say friend, but classmates, uh, was showing off their Ninja Turtle comics to everybody in school for, I don't know, show and tell or something. And I got to flip through one of the issues of the comic book, just like passively, just like, a, all right, just like briefly looking at the art. 
I was confused because it didn't resemble the cartoon at all, the video games at all, and only barely resembled the toys. So I know nothing about the comic book. All I know about the comic book is it's nothing like the cartoon. And uh, the only um, other evidence I have of this is the 1990 live-action film produced by New Line Cinema that is allegedly based on the, car the uh, comic book, not the cartoon. And that is very different from the cartoon. And I remember watching the movie back in, like, 90, 91, whenever I got the VHS tape, because uh, I didn't see it in theaters because I was young. Um, and I remember watching it thinking, where's Crane? Where's the Technodrome? Where's Rocksteady? Where's Bebop? Where are, the, where are the robots? I remember being very confused and still liking the movie, but being disappointed it didn't have the things I wanted. Um, so there is that. Uh, now let's talk about the cartoon itself. You have, basically, it's the same, it's the same story as the, I would assume, sort of, the comic books. You have four turtles who were mutated by some ooze that turned them into ninjas. Teenage ninjas. You have a ninja who turns into a rat. You have another ninja who is the bad guy. His name is Shredder. Um, he leads a gang of street thugs and punk rockers um, who he, muta he mutagen mutates two of them into Rocksteady and Bebop. And he's working with an alien brain named Krang who has this gigantic um, rolling tank Death Star called the Technodrome and an endless army of robot android foot soldiers. Now, the first season, which is basically like a mini-series of its own, it's only a, like a handful of episodes, I think like five episodes or something like that, not very many, it focuses on the Turtles defeating Shredder and sending the Technodrome with Krang to Dimension X. Basically exiling the bad guy, leaving Shredder by himself uh, without his army. Season 2 has Shredder and the scientist he partnered with, Baxter Stockman, who is a... Uh, I'll just say a certify, uh, uh, certifiably insane mad scientist... And they go on many quests to try to prove to Krang they have the um, skills to defeat the turtles. So that, okay, this is the plot. They have to prove to Krang that they can defeat the turtles so that Krang will return to Earth with the Technodrome and his army so they can defeat the turtles. I know, it doesn't fucking make sense. But that's what it is. That's the story. Which, again, doesn't fucking make sense because it's one dude against five ninjas and this fucking batshit crazy pseudoscientist dude who is, between the two of them, so insane and bonkers that they can't get shit done. And then you have a bunch of weird one-off episodes with, like, fucking the Rat King and you got fucking Neutrinos from Dimension X and just a bunch of weird bonkers shit. And then somehow Baxter gets mutated into a fly? Which I remember him as a fly. I didn't remember him as a scientist. So that was like, oh, okay, I guess I forgot this. Because I just, I have the fly Baxter Stockman toy, and that's what I remember him from the video games. And then season three basically starts off with the return of the Technodrome back on Earth now. Well, no, season two ends with the return of the Technodrome back on Earth. But it sinks underground, and it's down at the crust of the earth, or the core of the... I don't know, it's somewhere underground, near the lava flow. Which, okay, it's unrealistic, but it's talking turtles, so let's, let's just brush past that. And then you have... Um, Shredder now has Rocksteady and Bebop back in his um, arsenal, as well as the foot soldiers. Now... Part of season two, you had the rock soldiers who were a big plot point. They're missing from season three. They're just not there. No explanation. Where did they go? What happened to them? They just disappeared and they never bring them up again. Or at least they haven't yet. Um, now let's talk about what I've seen so far. Season one is very serialized. Each episode bleeds into the next episode and they all have impact on one another 
It's very serialized and it's very, you know, very heavy sci-fi influenced, sci-fi horror. A lot of sci-fi references, a lot of horror movie references. I'm here for that. I'm down for that. I'm like, all right, this is pretty good. Season two takes a more um, kind of loosely connected plot, but also kind of a monster of the week or MacGuffin of the week uh, plot device format of the show where like it's still kind of telling a linear story, but they're less connected. It's just like loosely connected. And then season three is clearly where they went syndicated. And it's like you could watch these episodes in any order. You don't have to watch them in the order uh, that they aired because they're not connected at all. And sometimes something will happen in one episode that should impact later episodes, but it doesn't. And things like that. And they have an episode where they literally suck all of the energy out of the sun, which is billions of times bigger than the planet Earth. And they stick it into these four little batteries the size of a fucking oxygen tank and it's like okay i can suspend disbelief to a point okay it's unreal it's ninjas it's robot ninjas it's rock ninjas from dimension x okay i'll go with it but as soon as you're telling me you can take all the energy out of the sun and stick it in these four little oxygen tanks i'm like all right i'm tapping out that's too fucking far um the humor is of the time so a lot of it is, you know, surfer dude horror humor, excuse me, because they are the Ninja Turtles are surfer dudes, um, which is very obviously their personalities. Then you have the theme song, which does a really good job for a theme song, setting up the premise of the show. It's Ninja Turtles. Uh, there's an evil dude named Shredder. Splinter's a ninja master who taught them how to be ninjas. And then it gives you a one sentence who their personality is. Leonardo leads, Donatello does machines, Raphael is rude, and Michelangelo's a party dude. All right, that's all you need to know about them. And that is literally their entire personalities. They get no character development whatsoever. In the first, like, 60 episodes I've seen of the cartoon so far, there has been zero character development among any of the characters. Shredder doesn't get character development. Splinter doesn't. Irma doesn't. Vernon, Vernon, don't. April does. Nobody does. There's no character development at all. It's a kid's show, so whatever. I'll allow it. Now, the pretty much everybody's personality is one sentence. Master Shredder is the ninja master. You know, he's somehow psychic, I guess. But he's also a rat, so he has rat senses, I guess. Makes sense. Um, but he is sad he miss in the first two seasons he misses being a human but then they have an episode where he gets to be human again and then turning into a rat gives him the power to save the day and then he's all of a sudden okay with being a rat um now one thing that i do know is different from the cartoon in the movie uh, i don't know what it's like in the comic books because i never read it but in the cartoon master splinter goes out of his way to overemphasize how much he despises pizza. But in the movie, we see him clearly eating pizza. So it's like, all right, whatever. I will say for an, act, an 80s sci-fi action cartoon, it gets the job done. It's going to satisfy you. It's going to entertain you for the 22-minute runtime. You know, catchy theme song. You know, good action. The stories don't make a fucking lick of sense, but they don't have to. It's just like, hey... Master Shredder has this device that's going to end the world. We have to stop him. And then we do. And then roll credits and then rinse, repeat. Now, it, it is not science fiction. It is pseudoscience fiction. And what I mean by that is there's no science, scientific basis for any of their sci-fi. It is literally just made up sci-fi. And it's so made up that they take real science words and twist them to sound sci-fi-y so that they, they can get away with, well, that's not the actual science thing. This is this other thing. Now, I could, I could explain this away because they do have Dimension X and they have the Dark Dimension and they have the Void and other dimensions in the, in, in, established in the universe. So I can accept that 
within the context of this cartoon, they exist in an alternate universe from our reality. I'll allow it. Which means they maybe have different properties of physics than our universe, I guess. I'll allow it. Whatever. It's the only way I'll allow it because it's the only way the cartoon makes sense. Now, obviously, they go the uh, G.I. Joe route where the bad guys are robots so they can blow them up and cut their arms off and decapitate them and still be a kid's show and not showing blood but sparks instead so that you can have your violent cartoon without having parents crying, oh my god, my kids are watching the devil, which they did anyways, which sidebar, um, and I've already noticed this, in the real world, uh, during the production of the cartoon, parents did bitch and complain that Michelangelo used nunchakus, um, and they were like, no, that's too violent, even though the lead guy has katanas, the asshole has size, and the scientist has a giant wooden stick. But no, no, those nunchakus, that's a bridge too far. So there comes a point in the cartoon where Michelangelo just stops using his weapons altogether. And you never see him use his weapons again. Now you see him, you still see them drawn on his back of his turtle shell. They're still there. But he, stop, he just stops using them. I'm going to assume it's more rooted in racism than anything because that's the only explanation I have for why the swords are okay because, you know, white people use swords. But this weapon that only Japanese people used, we can't have our kids playing with that. No, sir. That's the only explanation for I, I have for why they were offended by that weapon. By the way, this, this, this series has a lot of insensitive racial stereotypes. And I will say flat-out racism. The very first episode, April's like, how do you know that they were ninjas? And the cop is like, because the rope says made in Japan. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Are you kidding me? First of all, there wouldn't be a made in anywhere sticker on a rope. That's not how it fucking works. Second of all, just be, I mean, fucking Nintendo was made in Japan. Are you telling me I was a ninja for playing Nintendo? What the fuck? Racist. Anyways, it was the 80s. So you kind of got to sweep that under the rug and be like, all right, it was the time, whatever. Let's move on. Let's see if we can get past it. By the way, they don't get past it. Uh, it just gets worse from there. It never improves. Also, the levels of misogyny and sexism is unbearable to watch, but it is what it is. Um, now, as far as the actual individual storylines go, some episodes work better for me than others. Some of them, I'm invested in the episode, and I'm like, hey, I know that sci-fi movie this is referencing. Other episodes, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That's the Karate Kid. That's fucking short circuit, goddammit. Um, so it's like, some of the references, it's a little on the nose. Other references, it's like, all right, that's pretty cool. That's, that's subtle enough. I get it. But it's just like, you know, I don't know. Their catchphrase, they have two catchphrases. Um, turtle power is their primary catchphrase that they all, well, actually they have three catchphrases. I, I, I have to backpedal. Their main catchphrase is turtle power that they always scream right before they go into battle. But immediately after saying that, Leonardo always adds turtles fight with honor, which is his specific catchphrase that only he says. And then as they charge into battle, they say their, their calling catchphrase, which is their yo jo which is basically Kawabunga. Um, and they've all used Kawabunga excessively in this cartoon. To the point where it gets a little obnoxious, but whatever. It is what it is. And they even try different puns of it. You know, so it's like, alright, I get it. That's your favorite word. You know, you're seven years old and, the, and you just learned the word Kawabunga yesterday. And so you're going to use it all the goddamn time. I get it. Um, except you're like 37 years old writing a cartoon for seven year olds. I don't, I don't know what, maybe I don't get it. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, um, uh, up to this point, all I would say is I have minor nitpicks, which are just gripes. I can, I can look past. I'm going to roll my eyes probably two or three times every episode that is going to happen. But I'm still overall enjoying the show up to this point. I'm midway, or a third of the way, I should say, through season three. Um, so I haven't seen enough of the show 
to be able to have an overall um, opinion of the series as a whole. I watched it as a kid every Saturday morning when it, new episodes came out. Um, I don't remember that much about it. I've seen things that I was like, oh, I remember this, but this isn't how I remember it going. So everything so far has been like a mixture of, huh, I kind of remember that, but that's not how I remember it, to what the fuck is this? I have no memory of this at all. Now you got to remember, I watched the show. I started watching the show when I was like six or seven. So, you know, I was pretty young when I started watching this cartoon. Um, so anyways, at this point, I'm going to say I'm having fun. Obviously, I love the, I love the Turtles toys. I love the Turtles video games. The cartoon is fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good with it so far. So that's all I have for right now. So I'll try to get more videos out as I go. And then as soon as I get internet hooked back up to my house... I'll be back to my regular output of videos. But in the meantime, I'll try to throw you a bone here and there. Stay cool.